We saw a major shakeout happening here earlier today caused by a mix of different factors that I want to get into in today's video. CPI, CME gap, and a lot of other things played a huge role in that. And now, of course, we want to know where are we heading next? Is this shakeout done and are we going up now or is there more pain in the waiting for us? That is something that I want to talk about today. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these really important updates. And now let's directly jump into it here. So first of all, one reason why we started dumping really early today was that yesterday, again, the ETF uh, flows were slightly negative, not severely, you know, it was just minus 270 Bitcoins, not crazy. Uh, I'm really curious about how the ETF flows are looking by the end of today, you know, so they are not there yet, if they are positive or negative, because that can have, again, an impact on the price. The other reason why Bitcoin was dropping today is the CPI numbers that came out, because that led to this drop here. That whole move here, let me actually have a look percentage-wise, that was a 2.4% move to the downside in a matter of one and a half hours. So that was mainly caused by the CPI data coming out. So what did CPI indicate? Expected were a number of 3.4%, which would have been higher than um, the previous month by 0.2%. That was the expected number. The number that came in was 3.5%. So it was 0.1% higher than expected. Again, I believe that this is not outrageous, you know, so, but the market did not digest that really well. And we got immediately a big move here to the downside. So now it looks like people waking up and say, hey, it's not that bad, you know, it's 0.1% off what everybody was expecting. So let's calm down here a little bit. And that's why we see here Bitcoin moving back to the upside. And I guess if I would look in the stock market, it kind of looks similar. You know, it's what, what I'm guessing, you know, I'm not checking it right now. Another reason why Bitcoin went that low is that why we were going down, the CME gap was still open. And funny enough, there was a $1,500 um, difference between CME and the spot price until CME started to catch up. So the price was up here on CME, but on spot we were down here or even lower than that. Yeah, we were like kind of here on spot. And then finally CME also um, moved to the downside here. So from where was the discrepancy? coming really easy. The selling was spot driven. So the futures market are not directly correlated to the spot market. So th that's why we kind of get sometimes these huge price difference between the CME chart and the spot uh, and spot charts on, on Bitcoin. So but eventually the CME caught up. We finally closed the CME gap. If we are CME can now break above $69,100, so we are just $100 away from that and close the four hourly candle above that level, most likely we are continuing to go up here on CME and that will be then of course also translate into the spot chart. So what we don't want to see is another deviation here and something like this and we actually go and fill also the CME gap down here. So there is basically here, um, Wait, from where is this coming? So that CME gap, that is still open. So yeah, we don't want to see that be, be happening. So now we are above $69,100. If we continue to move like that, again, um, we just don't want to see another deviation. Uh, we want to see continuation here to the upside. When I go then here to the, oh, <laughs> that's the five minutes chart. Uh, or what we see here, this, this downward sloping trend line is still acting as a huge resistance for Bitcoin since we went here to $72,800 on Monday. So there's still the Monday high. That is the level that we need to reclaim to get into a new all-time high, as I also said yesterday. But now, now we have a small problem. The EMA ribbon has flipped bearish today and will act now as resistance if we try to break here higher again. And you see also here this prior support level starts to act now as resistance, you know. So here in the next 24 minutes, I want to see Bitcoin pushing above $68,600 um, and close the candle above here 
and keep moving higher. You know, so if we don't see that and this level turns into a resistance, I think we should become friends with the fact that we are moving down here into the next area of support between $66,000 and $67,000. So potentially we are ranging then here for a while before we see another move here to the upside. When it comes to indicators, what I like is that here on the MACD we have really, really shallow um, red selling candles on the MACD, which is basically telling us that this is just a short-lived um, yeah, move to the downside. The RSI is already uh, bouncing into the upside. The stochastic should follow in the next hour or so with a buy signal. And again, that should bring us back to higher prices. Um, in terms of levels that I'm looking at for that move, $69,200 uh, $69, is the first level that I'm looking at. And if we can break that, then $70,000 becomes logically the next level where I want Bitcoin to return to afterwards. Want for sure know if I kept my word, you know, and were still buying every time when I said I'm actually buying. And I did, you know, you see here on Bybit, I still have my position. I bought here, I sold up here, I bought again here. Um, I had somewhere sold here along the lines again. It's not showing on the chart, but I sold kind of like here again. So, ah, no, sorry. I bought here and then I averaged down, you know, so because I bought here again when we dropped, here again when we dropped, and now I bought here again where we dropped. So you see, more or less, I'm hitting good, good points from where um, I'm entering every time again. So at some point, you know, so even if we move one more time down and we hit here that level for example at some point you're going to see price bouncing back to the upside and um, it will have been worth to average down my position here until we get a move like this so what i'm actually also um, anticipating over the next couple of days so this is how you can build positions you know so of course i wouldn't recommend that to anyone to do what what i do here you know with such high leverage but I want to turn this into a profit and that's why um, I just keep um, averaging down uh, at any big opportunity that position, you know. So I will cut this position if we would ever move to like $64,000, you know. So then, then I'm going to cut it wherever I am then with that uh, because then we lose the structure and everything, you know. But until then, I will keep buying on every major dip. The next time where I potentially buy is when we break this downward sloping trend line here. And then maybe a last time. No, actually, yeah, that's the last time here where I'm going to buy when we break that downward sloping trend line. When we're looking at the four hourly chart and that symmetrical triangle, what we observe here is that we got a deviation to the upside and then straight back down into the symmetrical triangle. That is technically a really really bearish sign when we get something like that now what we need to see to happen here is that bitcoin basically does a v-shaped recovery back to the upside you know so or in the absolute worst case that we are around here get a breakout i don't like to get breakouts really close into the apex because they are normally volatile and um they can lead um really easily to fake outs where you basically do again something like this here and therefore i would like to see something like that here before the weekend preferably you know so again in our favor is right now that the indicators have completely cooled down here only on the macd we need to get uh, some lighter red candles to see that the selling pressure is going away and as soon as we are seeing that we should get a nice reversal here back to the upside, um, you see here that support level of 68,400 to 67,500 um, is holding because we got here a massive wick right now. If that is staying that way for the next hours, I'm pretty positive on that we are retesting the top of that downward sloping trend line of that triangle. But if we can manage to today to close above that, I'm not so sure. You know, so it's also possible that we are just getting there, start consolidating a little bit along that and then get a breakout, you know, so that would be absolutely fine. And the resistance that we need to break is $71,500 approximately. 
and close a four hourly candle. Uh, let's, yeah. So I would actually like to see a 12 hourly candle, a 12 hourly candle close above that to be really, really sure that we've broken that level and then see continuation to the upside. That's what I'm looking for. Something else I want to show you guys uh, so that you actually see that I put my money where my mouth is. I opened a position on Binance while we were dropping at the same level where I opened the, um, uh, where I added to the other one. So there you see, uh, I think that's a Bitcoin position. Yes, so $4,000. And that one, uh, I gonna let it, oh, it will actually close soon. <laughs> So I should adjust a little bit uh, here my take profit point um, before it's actually closing. Oh shit, I think that one left already the building. I got the money already. <laughs> okay, that position actually closed already without that I was aware of it, you know? So I just wanted to adjust the, the uh, take profit point, but it, it took it already, you know? So that position is closed. I made uh, $5,000 on this um, in a matter of two hours, you know? Nice, nice afternoon, guys. You know, so I, I can definitely live with that. If you want to get trades like that directly from me and take advantage of them, then you should go here under my video to Bybit. You still get $30,000 absolutely for free if you use my specific link and deposit bonuses. Or if you want to just trade altcoins with me, go to Margex and provide liquidity to the strategy called AM Crypto Altcoins. And if you can not use Bybit, use BitGet or Femex, they're equally good, especially if you are in the UK or in the US, uh, that you can use them on Femex. You get, um, you have the chance still to win like a total, I think it's like $17,000 if you use here the link down below. And if you just want to copy trade me, go to Fairdesk, $120,000 still in bonuses available, the biggest one in the industry. All these links are in the pinned comment below or in the description of the video and you support the channel if you're using them. So uh, yeah, I would highly appreciate if you um, take advantage of them because I want to scale the team to provide you even more content and also be a little bit more available on uh, Telegram and Discord and so on and so on. You know, so because I just need more free time at hand um, to, uh, to do all these things, you know. So I would really do nothing more then be 17, uh, yeah, let it be 14, 14, 15 hours a day available for you guys on Discord or wherever, provide you with setups and so on and so on and help you to make money. You know, but right now it's really, really difficult for me to do that with all the calls that I have going on for um, <clears throat> my, the other side of my business, you know, so sponsorships, blah, 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 you know, so it's, 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 it's a lot going on in the background that you don't see while I'm actually making videos, you know, talking with the content team, um, that is helping me with editing uh, and graphic designs and all that kind of stuff, you know. So if I did not have to manage all of that, I would have had, I would have much more time to help you guys to make money. So, but at least you get once, once a day video, you know, where I uh, do my best for you guys. Something else that I want to show you guys here on the liquidation levels. So you can see here that Bitcoin cleared a lot of over leveraged positions that I was talking yesterday about. I don't know why this indicator is not showing me again the levels that were liquidated. Uh, in the past it did this. I don't know why this is not showing anymore, uh, but it's fine. So by here around these levels were a lot of over leveraged long positions. They got all liquidated right now. Uh, and we have now some over leveraged short positions above us. And it looks like we want to move into that direction finally. Again, if we get something like a V-shaped recovery, I would highly welcome that right now. Um, and like I said, things are looking good for that right now because the indicators all came down um, only on the 12 hourly and on the daily. There is technically still room that we get a little bit lower, but again, I'm not expecting anything like that right now. You know, so also when we are looking here, the liquidation heat map, and you see we took here also a lot of liquidity in the $69,000 area out and um, we are bouncing now back up the highest concentration of liquidity, even if we would tap down here, you know, into the low $60,000 area, the area above us is the hotter one. So there is way more liquidity than down below us. So which again, make more sense to be taken out here, you know, if we move here to the upside. Now, when it comes to the spot bits that, uh, so I want to move this actually to the daily chart. So what we can see here that over the last couple hours, the spot, uh, so first of all, we, we saw here the whole day selling pressure coming in, 
you know, so people were de-risking because of CPI. And now, since, what is that, the last hour, we see an uptick in the, in the spot bits again, where people start buying back, you know, so we are not getting shaken out out of our positions for a really simple reason. We know where the market is going and we are not short-term holders, you know, getting in, out, in, out, in, out in our positions. That's, that's usually not what we are doing, you know. So if I give you short-term positions, we have an entry, we have a target, we have a stop loss, but we are not jumping in and out, out of our positions because of news events, you know, some, like here, some other people. And that is reflecting here right now in um, the CVD chart. Now, when it comes to... Uh, setups for Bitcoin for potential next trades. If you're not in a position already, remember, uh, let me actually go to this chart for this. So the next best point for you to enter a position, technically, if you're a little bit risk adverse, you can try to enter right now or wait for retest of here $68,400 if we ever get that. Um, if you are risk adverse again. And the other next best entry is at around $70,000. And the target remains uh, to be 75 and above for that specific trade. Now, when we go to the Bitcoin dominance, we saw a slight break above uh, the 54.3% uh, level, but now are again beneath it. I expect still that we move here to the upside uh, if Bitcoin goes above $70,000 today, just because Bitcoin is going up, dominance normally is going with it. Again, I don't believe that this level here is going to break and give it until the halving, so which is more or less like in a week, and then we finally see a major drop. So I, I don't want to sound like a broken record. That's why I'm not talking anything more about this because it's just not really interesting, you know, right now. Yeah, unfortunately, you have missed, at least um, uh, based on that video, the chance to get a perfect re-entry here uh, to for the same trade setup that I had given here in the past. Here for Ethereum, if you are looking for an entry, wait for $3,560 to be broken. I would not enter this now otherwise because we are at the point of control here on the VPVR. And if we're not breaking this, then we are potentially coming back down. Then again, you can retake here the same entry that we had down here at $3,440. If we're not getting it again, your entry is up here. The target is still $3,900 then for that trade if you enter here. If you get the chance for some reason uh, to enter here again, then the old target, $3,650 is your initial target. And then again, you can trail your stop loss once we are like at $3,640, you trade it to $3,600 to get not shaken out here to $3,900. That's how I would trade it. Again, indicators have cooled down, which is an indication for me that uh, the reversal is in progress right now and potentially finally brings us into a new all-time high here. Here on this Ethereum chart, uh, again, you see another reason why we move down here. And that is the Fibonacci golden ratio. We got rejected from that pretty clearly on the daily chart. So, but if we are able to reclaim this today and close the daily candle above that or at, tomorrow with the daily candle tomorrow, uh, that would signify uh, that we would start attempting to move here also into new all-time high for Ethereum. And that's basically already for today's uh, video, guys. I hope you did not get shaken out. Um, I'm just happy that I made my profit here already because we are going down a little bit right now. So I'm quite happy with that. And yeah, if you want more calls like that, use my signals or um, just follow the trades I'll give you absolutely for free and make sure that you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell and I'll see you then again tomorrow.